This time on IFAF. Idaho Falls and Felonies. The juice doth protest too much. What else has he been lying about? I have never seen someone wearing monster clothing and thought, wow, they look really cool. I've got one going on right now. Yeah, I've definitely noticed it. I've just fluffed it up a little bit. I mean, those are lots of buzzwords that don't mean a lot, but I'm excited about it. IFAF, Idaho Falls Weekly Informal Infotainment with Mike Nelson and Carly Morgan. On this episode, what to do if you're ever in a stalker situation like Carly was Ugh, told us about last week. That such a creep. Uh, cool animation on the solar eclipse that happened one week ago. Local News 8 and Jay Hildebrandt teamed up to bring us a report on crime headlines in Idaho. Oof. Well, and there have been a lot of them, too. Say it isn't so. Something cool coming up on 420, what the INL is up to these days, and the longest running cartoon set in each state. What's Idaho's? We have one? We do. Where's our weird Barbie? I want it. I know. It's been so long. I kind of forgot that it, it like, I forgot <laughs> that we bought it yeah. for a while. And then you reminded me of it the other day. I was like, oh shit. Yeah. What's up with that? So we bought it for 50 bucks when mm-hmm. Mattel released it last year. Right. Oh, okay. May 31st. We should have it on or before May 31st. Okay. About time. We still but... got a minute. Yeah. But yeah, it's. I checked on eBay. They're going for three hundred bucks already. Three hundred. What are we gonna do with ours? I mean, I think we should take it out and play with it. (laughs) Oh, wouldn't that piss off so many people? So many people. (laughs) You know, I actually. That's the weirdest thing you can do with a child's toy, Carly. I know. I know. How could I? (laughs) Uh, You know, I actually have been seeing the uh, Barbie, like the. Barbie Barbie mm-hmm. in stores lately with her and her little pink gingham dress. And she's so freaking cute. And I like, I have no use for a Barbie. Is she one from, the, is she the Barbie from the movie? Yes. Is she the, the Margot Barbie Robbie movie? Yes. Barbie? Yeah. And she actually has a Margot Robbie face mold too. Okay. Like she looks a lot like Margot Robbie. They did a really good job. It's so weird when that hat, when art imitates life, imitates art, imitates. Right. <laughs> like, like when, like when. Taco Bell introduced the Doritos Locos Taco. Right. I thought that was the end. <laughs> but then Doritos introduced the Taco Bell Doritos Locos Taco <laughs> Doritos. And I was like, ah, my head exploded. <laughs> That's so funny. That's so just it's, random. It's the toy based on the movie about right. the toy. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. With the toy now looking like the actor who is portraying the toy. Yeah. Yeah. Either way, <laughs> she's so freaking cute. And I kind of want it, even though I have no use for a Barbie, mm-hmm. I'm not going to use it. You know? Do they have a Ryan Gosling Ken? They do. And they're huh? both really cute. And I really want them. Do they have like, the skate, the, the Malibu they do. Yes, or the they Venice have a, Beach? The little roller skate outfits. Yeah. They do. They have both. And they're both really cute. That's pretty cool. I know. I know. It really <laughs> makes me want them. But also, like, am I going to spend that money? No. That'd be a stupid thing to buy. Do I want it anyway? Because I'm a child. Right. Yeah, kind of. <laughs> right. That's It's one of those things where I want it. Mm-hmm. And if you had the inner parent, you know, <laughs> well, why do you want it? I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> like we talked about these mic plates here. Yeah. If you're, again, a visual thing, you remember you can watch on YouTube. We These are Shure SM7B microphones, pretty industry standard microphones for mm-hmm. podcasting. They're just pretty straight ahead. Uh, but for 25 bucks, you can buy a customized <laughs> face or butt plate for it. <laughs> and I just wanted them. Butt plug? <laughs> yeah, a little pl- it just plugs yeah. right in. Yeah, it plugs up the butt <laughs> so that you can't mess with it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You can walk around with it even. Yeah. <laughs> but like a general manager would say, well, why do you need those? I don't know, because it's cool. Yeah. Yeah, you don't need. And you- it's 25 bucks. That's the thing too. The answer is you don't need them, but yeah. you want them. <laughs> but then I realized as we were using these, like um, that's just, I mean, how many times is our logo on the screen right now, three. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Or at least partially good. with the sign and the two mic butts. Right. Also, sometimes do, on the shirt, that's four. That's true. That's true. And also, do we have a watermark? Because we should if we don't. Yeah, there's a way to do it. I haven't <laughs> messed with that. <laughs> I don't blame you. It's probably a pain in the ass. I don't blame you. Wow. So last week was really nice. Oh, it was so nice. Remember last I actually Friday? I got a night? little sunburn. Yeah. I don't know you, if you can you, tell I've got a little color. Got a little red there. Yeah. <laughs> on the uh, chestal uh-huh. area. Yep. Well, it's because I had my big floppy hat on, but it only covers so much, especially when you're <laughs> sticking out to here. <laughs> you need a floppier 
<laughs> you know what? I do. So the thing is, I have two big floppy hats. I have the one that I wore when we went to Disneyland that I specifically got because it was like, it had a little neck strap, which I thought was nice because mm-hmm. I didn't want to lose it on a roller coaster or something right. or a windy day. Um, but then I have another one that I bought at like Target right before we went um, that I was going to take, but then I was like, nah, it's just not quite right. And that's when I bought the other, but I took the ribbon off of it and now I need to put a new one on. So I can't use it yet because it looks incomplete, but it's like much floppier and it's way wider. So yeah, I need to Good get a ribbon problems. for it. <laughs> it doesn't have a ribbon. It needs a ribbon. <laughs> okay. Anyway, back down to the forties and fifties this week. <laughs> wah, wah. Yeah. That's springtime in Idaho. <laughs> I mean, I almost kind of dig it because, you know, keeps you on your toes. If you don't like the weather, just wait around five minutes. It'll change. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Which, by the way, they say in every state. Yeah. That's not just an Idaho thing. (laughs) Well, I mean, that can't be every state because there are some states that are just always the same temperature. They probably don't say that like in Santa Barbara. Right. Where it's 78 degrees year round. Yeah. 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 Or like... Nevada and Arizona, they're always hot as balls. Yeah. You know, yeah, <laughs> like, right. like there's never a time when you go there and you're like, oh, it's really nice. Like, it's chilly here. Like, no, it's always f- hot. And I, and I just want to <laughs> say, is there any, out, is there any more outdated, outmoded, useless delivery system than a TV meteorologist? Oh, Do, there's gotta be. We don't need them anymore. No one cares if it's a high pressure or a low pressure system that's causing this. Mm. I mean, some people care, especially because that could be indicative of tornadoes. No one cares, Carly. No one cares. Trust me. Like (laughs) it takes you five to 10 minutes with commercials to get through the weather. Sure. On it. When in 30 seconds, you can go to your phone and get an hour by Mm -hmm. hour forecast for your geo targeted location. That's true. That's true. I don't care what the weather's like in Poughkeepsie, mm-hmm. Peoria. Right. Now, that being said, though. Pawnee, <laughs> Paducah. Funny. Pocatello. <laughs> Just kidding. I love you, Pocatello. But, but I look at Idaho Falls weather. Yeah. But you do have to admit, it is kind of nice to have a pretty person talking at you. Yeah. Or If they're pretty. I do always like the um, weatherman mess ups, like the green screen screw ups. Yeah. Those are always fun. Or when the I dog think, comes onto the screen. Yeah. Yeah. I do think that the world would be a worse place if it weren't for uh, weatherman green screen screw ups. Or there is there is one weather dude who makes it fun. And I think listeners or viewers send in their request. Uh-huh. And he incorporates lyrics from rap songs. <laughs> yes. In his, and he's a white boy. Right. In his weather forecast. Yes. I've seen that. And that's funny. Yeah. Yeah, that is the kind of weather I would watch. If they can make it entertaining, sure, that'd be all right. But like, here's our Doppler radar. No, uh-uh. <laughs> I've got multiple weather reporting stations from, you know, NOAA, NOAA, the National Oceanic <laughs> and Atmospheric Administration. I was like, the guy with the ark? <laughs> yeah, right from the dude with the ark. He's watching for the rain. <laughs> yeah, there you go. He's got him two by two lined up outside. I mean, he was pretty worried about the weather. I feel like he would keep it accurate. We don't need Doppler. We don't need... <laughs> This is your first alert. Nope. First alert's on my phone. Not waiting around for commercials. Right. Especially when they make, hey, hang on. The weather's up next. Yeah. And then play five minutes of commercials. Yeah. Then it's like. In that five minutes, I will know more about the weather than you're going to say. Yeah. That's fair. That's fair. (laughs) But I mean, it is also kind of fun when they send the weather guy out, especially if it's like really awful weather. That's what I want to see. It's kind of funny. Like. I kind of feel terrible for him. Torture the meteorologist. <laughs> yeah. I want him standing out there in gale force winds with his right? with his jacket zipped up around a <laughs> stop sign pole. Yes. Uh-huh. Or baking in the sun. Yeah. <laughs> or, <laughs> or frying like you are, obviously, yeah, from the I know. two minutes I, of sun you I got was last literally, week. Yeah, I was outside for like 20 minutes and got a sunburn. <laughs> That's how white I am. It's bad. Straight to the (laughs) follow-ups. Temperature in this studio is a cool 69 degrees. Remember, I thought thought Letterman's studio was 66. Oh, yeah? Eh, I was so wrong. Was it 69? 55. Damn. That's chilly. And I guess he played around with a lot of different temperatures. Uh Uh-huh. And whatever, the night when everything was 55, all the jokes landed right. 
Huh, crazy. And it was popping, and he said, that's it from now on. Yeah, not to mention that all of the female celebrities' nips would have been out. So. I think so. I wonder if that's another reason. Yeah, kind of a bonus. But they did. <laughs> the producers warned, I think, guests and the audience, hey, it's cold. Okay, okay. Pack extra clothing for The Late Show with David Letterman. Interesting. But, you know, that is kind of nice, because then you can actually wear layered outfits without sweating to death in them. Right, yeah. You know? Yeah, but the point one of the producers made was, you know, yeah, thing, things are funnier when they're colder. Mm -hmm. And and conversely, a warm audience is a sleepy audience. Right. That's true. You know, you mm -hmm. just sort of lulled to sleep in the, you oh, know, I'm so comfortable. It's like after Thanksgiving dinner. <sighs> Like Lindbergh, uh, when he made his flight across the Atlantic, he actually very specifically made sure to keep the cockpit really cold because okay. he knew it would help him stay, stay awake. awake. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I wonder if he had anything else. I mean, there, there wasn't Red Bull back then, but there were like. No, I think he also had coffee, and I think I can't remember if he. Amphetamines. I can't remember if he intentionally did eat to stay awake or if he chose not to eat so that the hunger would keep him up. A big reason why I gained a lot of weight in college was because I found that it was really easy to write essays if I had a snack because then it would kind of <laughs> keep, it would keep my mouth sort of preoccupied right. and I like, I don't know, I could divide my brain power so I didn't have, to, I wouldn't get distracted as easy, you know? And so I feel like having a little snacky snack is a great way to sort of focus on a task. I, I do too. I know that when I'm doing something just physical, like working out or walking, mm -hmm. I have to listen to something too. Right. And when I'm just doing mental exercise stuff, mm -hmm. it helps to shake my leg or pace or whatever. Right. Right. Or chew gum. I do like chewing yeah. gum. Yeah. Sometimes that's hard for me. <laughs> oh, really? Walk and chew gum at the same time. <laughs> Three more follow-ups, starting with Miles McDonald from Rigby. Oh, yeah. Yeah, the guy who was on the Tonight Show, the Show Me Something Good segment, could balance a spin a basketball, balance it on the butt end of his toothbrush <laughs> while brushing his teeth. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. Uh, I checked him out on YouTube. He's already a huge star. Yeah. He's you got were like, showing me some of his videos and I was like, okay. He's already got 2 million followers on YouTube. Wild. Can you imagine going to school with like a social media star? Yeah. Like that seems like it'd be weird, man. He's at McDeezy <laughs> and then I think an underscore on YouTube. Mm -hmm. I tagged him. My friend requested him. He's a super nice guy. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, didn't he actually like respond to you? Yeah. Yeah. Which was super hey, cool. Thanks for putting us on our episode. Yeah. This is after he was on The Tonight Show. I know. <laughs> hey, thanks, IFAF, for putting me also on your shitty small town podcast. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks for the extra 20 <laughs> views. I appreciate it. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, McTeezy. <laughs> Wish we could do more for you. You know, maybe if you helped us out, we could. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> We're going to be begging this guy uh, yeah. for, to put us on his YouTube channel. <laughs> right? Uh, Man, if only that'd be cool. A follow-up from our buddy Brad uh -huh. about your Target stalker story. Oh, yeah? Yeah. And he posted a whole meme. I won't read the whole thing verbatim, but he made a good point. If you're ever out and a man is making you feel unsafe, scan your surroundings, find an older female, mm -hmm. perhaps an elder millennial. Oh, yeah. Uh huh. Run up to him and say, make eye contact with her. And say, Mom, this guy's making me feel uncomfortable. Or he's bothering me. Uh-huh. And nine That's times out of ten, mm -hmm. the the meme said, yeah, the mama bear instinct will pop out. I mean, I could totally see that. That is that is absolutely something I would do for someone. Well, and it kind of sounded like that target checker situation. Like mm -hmm. she, like the, like the minute your target stalker yeah. saw you talking to the target checker, mm -hmm. that should be a tongue twister. <laughs> He stopped and went away. Yeah. He, like, I could see his eyes got kind of big and he, he knew he'd been caught. He knew he wasn't slick. Yeah. You can really do it with anyone. Cause the thing is, it's all about numbers, you know? So long as the guy knows that there's another witness or another person he has to take on, there are so many times when chicks will go up to other women their same age even be like, hey, it's so nice to see you. What are you doing here? Like, I wasn't expecting to see you, you know? And the other chick will sort of get the hint and play along. Which is like, we we got each other's backs. That That's a nice thing about ladies. Yeah. You know? And uh, you've heard the, okay, you've heard the John Mulaney bit about uh, he was walking in the same direction as another woman. Right. And she started walking a little faster. And uh -huh. he thought, well, she must know something I don't know. Maybe the train's coming and she can hear it. So he also started walking faster. Yes. And then she started running and he also started <laughs> running. Yes. You know, so I will say that's happened to me at least once in my life mm -hmm. where I didn't realize I was behind somebody 
it wasn't too dark. It wasn't too late at night. Right. But I was like, oh boy. Okay. I'm just going to stand over here and stare at my phone for a minute. Maybe make a phone call or uh-huh. something, you know. Yeah. Kind of act casual. <laughs> put some space between us. So mm-hmm. yeah, I sort of took that upon myself and I don't know if that's better or worse. I don't know. No, I, I, I think that's great. Honestly, All right. you know, that's sort of like, cause the thing is you can't just be like, Hey, I'm not trying to be creepy. I'm just walking in this direction too. Cause then you sound creepy. Right. You know, <laughs> how did we get on to song of the South last episode? Do you even remember? Cause I don't, but somehow we did. Um, recontextualizing history. I don't remember. I don't remember either. <laughs> anyway, Kevin, our buddy in Manhattan, mm-hmm. who by the way, I already had his address because I sent him that Idaho care package. Right. So I saw, I don't know why, in my internet travels this past week, I saw a list of, laid over on the map of Manhattan, a list of boroughs. Oh, okay. Because, you know, I don't know New York boroughs. Never been. I know, which is such a shame. I know, we need to go. Yeah, yeah. All right. I went once when I was seven. Okay. It was cool. I went to FAO Schwartz and everything. No kidding. It was baller. I okay. got an American Girl doll. While I, oh, wait. Did I get it while I was That's there? That's the giant toy after? store. I think I got it after. Because my my cousin over there had a ton of them. And they were so cool. And I was like, okay. Like, I see it. Like, I kind of need one of these. By the way, those things are crazy expensive. Oh, They're yeah. like damn near 100 bucks a doll. Oh, I thought they were two or 300 by now. Oh, I don't know. I, I guess I'd have to double check. I just remember as a kid, they were like, they were yeah. spendy. Redonkulous. Yeah. Yeah. Which now you can get American Girl knockoffs at like Walmart for like 30 bucks. Uh-huh. You know? <laughs> Do they come with their own, I don't oh, know, little backstory? Not a, adoption paper, but backstory. No, they don't. Yeah. The but... Cabbage Patch dolls were the ones with. With the adoption certificate. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. All right. I do want to go into an FAO Schwartz, not to be confused with FKA Twigs. What is that? She's the woman that did the song, I didn't do it for you, that a guy oh. misheard the lyrics for, did an impression of the song in <laughs> Miss Piggy's voice <laughs> for the meme, let me do it for you, Kirby. <laughs> Kirby. <laughs> so stupid. All right. Kevin. So so anyway, I stalked Kevin to find out which borough he lives in. Oh, yeah. Nice. And it's, uh, he lives on the Upper East Side. Oh. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's like where Mrs. Maisel lives. Like five blocks away from Central Park. Oh, wow. Yeah. And like. See, that's know, how you, that's how you know blo- he's got like money, money. Yeah. <laughs> three blocks away from the East River. Uh-huh. It's just. it's. I mean, like he could, I think within a 30 minute span, mm-hmm. hit MoMA. The Museum of Modern Art, yeah. The Chrysler Building, the Empire State Building, the Statue of Liberty. Jeez, Louise! Like all the stuff I'd want to see. Yeah, yeah, all the stuff worth seeing. I don't know where Times Square is in relation to that. Probably right there. Anyway, Kevin said, "Hey, Mike, did you know Song of the South is on Archive.org, the Internet Archive?" Oh, cool. So there's this thing that's happening where um, kids these days are cleaning up movies mm-hmm. that you know. Disney hasn't bothered to release or re-release, say, in 4K. Oh, like like visually cleaning them up. Like Song of the South. I yeah. thought you meant like clean flicks cleaning them up. Oh, right. No. I yeah. mean, like, <laughs> yeah, like meticulously going through frame by frame. Wow. Upscaling it. I don't know. Some of them use AI to do Man, it. Man, that's crazy. You know, putting the sound in 5.1 surround. Wow. Like, it's crazy. Let's roll a little bit of Song of the South. Here's the pivotal moment where Uncle Remus is about to break into zippity doo die and boom, there it goes. And Now, to be clear, we can't actually play zippity doo da because that will get this demonetized and caught by Disney in like two seconds. Yeah, we could do it um, on Kazoo. Ooh, there we go. We can do it. Kazoo. Kazoo. <laughs> Kermy. Ready? Three, two. <laughs> Uh, we got kazoos. <laughs> this was such a fun purchase. I'm so For glad you show. did this. <laughs> Notice that Mike's is blue and Carly's Mine's purple. Is... It's actually a pinky purple. I tried they, to get you no pink. pink. Yeah. 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 It's all but good. Whatever. There are logo colors. Yeah, I like it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I actually really love kazoos. As a matter of fact, my main um, D&D character uh, card the bard. One of her instruments is a kazoo. It's like really ridiculous shit. Like a 
kazoo and a ukulele <laughs> and like just really dumb wow. instruments because it's funnier that way. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah. What about a, a Bert from Mary Poppins drum set? Ooh, drum kit. There we go. If you kick out, it bangs the kick drum on that the back. Be, that'd be a good idea. Or you know what? Bongos. <laughs> Yeah. Bongos would be fun. Everybody loves bongos. Right? Matthew McConaughey especially. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah. But anyway, I think she only had like two or three instruments. Okay. And I know that those were two of them. I don't remember the third right now because it's been a long time. You know, hasn't been since college. <laughs> so is Song of the South racist? I don't know. That's up for you to decide. I don't I... feel qualified to make that decision as a whitey in Idaho. Right. As a white Idahoan. Like the straight no chaser guy last time. Oh, that was funny. I forgot (laughs) about that. Yes. Yeah. But I just thought it was cool that it's out there for you to make a decision on. I think Disney Plus has disclaimers in front of Peter Pan and Dumbo, don't they? Right. I think so. Because of some of the, you know, weird stuff that happened in those movies. Mm -hmm. But like the guy who Well, it's specifically for the Indians and Peter Pan. Yes. And the um Jim Crows in Dumbo. In Dumbo. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I could just pick those up. I haven't even seen the disclaimer, but I know that's what it's for. Those are the moments. Because those are the two, like, really racist things in there. So I went down the rabbit hole like I tend to do. Uh I ended up downloading four versions of Song of the South before Uh I finally found the one that I thought, okay, this is the best. Okay. And it came out this year. Oh, wow. It's super fresh. Okay, cool. Um, In order to understand what Song of the South was all about, you have to know about... Noel Chandler Harris, Mm -hmm. who was a white dude uh, in the South who had heard over the years a bunch of African-American oral tradition stories Mm -hmm. and wanted to preserve them. That was his intent. Right. So from about 1881 to 1907, he cataloged all of these and sort of he made the storyteller a fictional character called Uncle Remus. Mm Mm-hmm. Walt Disney wanted to preserve the books in movie form, Mm -hmm. and that's why in 1946 they made Song of the South. You know, he got the rights to it and everything. Mm -hmm. First of all, these are parables. Right. And and like one is about reverse psychology. No, don't throw me in the briar patch. Oh, funny. You know, that the kid then takes in his real life. It was, I think, the first Disney film that combined live action with animation. Which is such a cool element. Yeah. I mean, like, what's this, 40 years before Roger Rabbit? Right. What I think sucks is even though the actor that played Uncle Remus, his name was James, won an Academy Award, an honorary one a couple of years later, uh-huh. he couldn't even go to the premiere because it was in pre-desegregation Atlanta. Yeah. So he couldn't even go into the- Which is nuts. But it is an interesting time capsule is all I'm saying. Right. The reason they made it so clear this was post-Civil War is a lot of people said, uh, that's not how blacks treated whites and whites treated blacks. But right. It was sort of a romanticized version mm-hmm. of plantation life in the South. You could even say Disney-fied version. Or Disney-fied or cartoonized yeah. <laughs> version. Yeah. yeah. Do you really, somebody made the point on the internet, do you really think chimney sweeps in Victorian England danced <laughs> on the roof and sang songs? Right. I would say that it's just that so many things were handled either insensitively or were just so poorly translate it not maybe not even translate well yeah this is they they were so mis. basically it seems like it was put together by a bunch of white people who didn't really understand the full implication of everything that they were doing disco yeah this is this is a white dude putting into film what a white Mm -hmm. dude put into books right from black people right you just you you in a situation like that there's no way to not miss a massive amount of context and culture and because of that, there's no way for it to come off as anything other than disin- disingenuous. And that's why, to our point last episode, I think we get an all-black cast, all-black directors, mm-hmm. and they remake it for Disney. I would love to see that. I mean, honestly, I, I watch the hell be, out of that. I think that'd be interesting. Yeah. For example, The Princess and the Frog. That's another Disney movie that is, you know, majority based in the South and about black people. And by the way, Tiana's Bayou Adventure replacing Splash Mountain, which was based on Song of the South. Which is so cool. At Disneyland. Yeah. Um, But anyway, I actually remember doing a paper about this in college where I theorized that Mama Odie was probably either a slave or a child of a slave. Because realistically, that was taking place like 1920s, somewhere up in there with the Art Deco stuff. And she references that she's like a hundred and... 25 or something oh, like man. she's a hella old lady <laughs> yeah yeah she so, could have been yeah so kind of interesting you know they definitely sanitize a lot of it like realistically dude she wouldn't have been friends with charlotte labeouf like right i do think that at least they had an i think it was interesting that they handled that that relationship as you know her mom being employed by them 
because I think that's a little more realistic. But also there's proof that um, there was slavery in like in the universe of Tiana's, well, in Tiana's universe because of uh, the song Way Down South. They say the sugar barons and the cotton kings. And it's like, okay, like that's that's evidence right there that like clearly even in this universe, slavery did exist and there is racism. Yeah. But like these are just some nice white people. <laughs> Is the race part actually pivotal to the princess and the frog? I think there's an argument you could say that it is, but realistically, not really to the plot points. You know, well, actually, that's not true because there's a part where the brothers are like, a woman of your background shouldn't have this restaurant. Yeah. What do you mean your background? Yeah. So I don't no, but know. I, hmm. when I was talking to Kevin, who's Asian, yeah, he said I like breakfast at Tiffany's, but you know mm-hmm. Mickey Rooney's depiction of right. the Asian guy still makes me cringe. Yeah. Okay. And you know, like they- like Swedish people get offended by the Swedish chef. <laughs> oh, I mean, I get it. You know? I feel bad for laughing. Sorry. Well, I, I just I mean, wasn't expecting. Like I was trying to think of a famous Swede, and then you said Swedish chef, and yeah. I was like, oh, okay, yeah. Borken, borken, <laughs> yeah. Borken. I'm almost certain that other people who speak other languages. Mm-hmm. When they hear us speak, oh, yeah. they make fun of it. You know, oh, they make fun of Americans everywhere for a lot of reasons. Oh, and yeah. they're not wrong. Yeah. But yeah, they're always like, "Hey, can you, do you want to go get a hamburger over at McDonald's?" You yes. know, kind of like we we're like, "Ooh, teen crumpets." Well, what, what what's that mean? <laughs> Things white people say after sex. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Thanks. <laughs> or are there any more gogurts left? <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, a gogurt sounds bitching right yeah. now. <laughs> I love gogurt. <laughs> kind of like my cat. She likes those little cat gogurts. Those churros. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. My buddy Ben, his cat is mm-hmm. um, 18 years old, so he's decided he's going to spoil the hell out of her. I love that. For the rest of her life. Uh-huh. Ordered some churros after I had given him a couple uh-huh. to try. He's like, she loves that shit. <laughs> it's like cat crack. Yes, dude. Not to it's be confused crazy. with the brand of catnip called cat crack, which your cats also love. They do. They're little crack heads. <laughs> cat crack yeah. heads. So today is April 15th. Happy tax day and many happy returns. Uh, also a week ago, our show aired on the morning of the eclipse or day of the eclipse. Oh yeah. Uh huh. It started. In fact, check out this cool animation from time and date.com. This is really cool. So you can see here the eclipse began at 11.30 a.m. It peaked at 12.30 p.m. Mm-hmm. It was done by 1.30. Kind of cool to see. Kind of cool. We don't have any photos of it because it was mostly cloudy. Here. It was. It <laughs> Even was. though you could see it. like Sure. But it was only like 42% totality. Mm-hmm. We got ours. I'm old enough to remember right. 2017 <laughs> Yeah. when we saw it. That one know, was cool. Seven years ago. But uh, like the world didn't end. There was no rapture. Mm -hmm. Everybody's still alive except for OJ. Mm -hmm. Oh boy. I know. Isn't that crazy? Best one I saw was uh, at least OJ can rest easy now that he knows his (laughs) wife's real killer is dead. Ooh. I mean. Because that was the thing is he was always like, I'm still searching for the real killer. Right. Honestly. I. You had 30 years, buddy. Okay. So I don't know how he died. I just know he did die. He died tragically of cancer at the age of 76. Yeah, I don't wish that on anybody. Right, right. But then there was also a few months before he passed away, Mm -hmm. he did like this video from his car and it was a vertical video. It was just like somebody was shooting with a cell phone. He was in his car looking at the camera saying, hey, I'm hearing rumors that I'm in hospice. Really? Hospice? You think hospice can get the juice down or something like that? You know, the media is a bunch of liars. And I thought... Oh, in retrospect, you know, things mm-hmm. that don't age well. Right, right. In retrospect, he was lying through his teeth. Right. So that makes me wonder. The lady doth protest too much. <laughs> right. Yeah. The juice doth protest too much. <laughs> what else has he been lying about? Well, I think we know what else he's been lying about. And also, if he knew he was dying, which he clearly did, how did he not like leave a open upon the event of my death letter where he just admits to it. Right. You know, at that point, like, okay, if I were in his position and I'd gotten away with it for that long, I absolutely would admit to it. I'd be like, ha ha ha, got one over on you bitches. Gotcha. (laughs) You know? And then, of course, everybody was replaying all of the, so in the, he was in the Naked Gun movies with Leslie Nielsen, which Uh I love. 
And his character, Nordberg, right, died creatively in a number of different ways, most memorably being pushed down the stadium steps in a wheelchair and flipping over. And I just because we've talked a lot about gallows humor and morbid stuff and right. how we want our funerals to go. Mm-hmm. I need to put like me dying in really funny, creative ways. There we go. On the internet. <laughs> so yes. when I die, people can bring those up and go. <laughs> That'd be funny. I like that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so. You know what? I wonder if we could find a, a production company that would be able to uh, make that happen. Do you think OJ is in heaven right now with Nicole Brown Simpson and Ronald Goldman and got his arms around him and they're all hugging it out? I don't think he's in heaven. <laughs> Okay. (laughs) Yeah, I don't either. Yeah. (laughs) Whoops. And okay, that's the other thing too. Like Shit sometimes gets dark on here. Like that's the one thing. Okay. If he was the killer. If he did it. If. Okay. You know he wrote that book, If I I Did It. I know. Here's how I would have done it. Right. Which was so stupid. I don't know who. Idiot. I don't know what Yes Man was so far up his ass that that got all the way to production. But dumb. <laughs> well, and you heard, I don't know, I watched one documentary where the prevailing theory was his son did it. Yeah, I have he heard that one. he was protecting his son. I yeah. Don't, I don't know. I've heard that too. At the very least, the one good thing he could have done was just admit to it so that the people who were wondering or the, you know, like their families and stuff could have a little closure. Like, let's be honest, they all know, but it'd be nice to have like real proof. Right. I mean, they have that, but. He probably thought he had plenty <laughs> more time left. Well, okay, but yeah, He's that's why you... He's so many other things in his life. Oh, I'll right. beat this. Right. But I mean, that's why you write a letter and just yeah. like leave it with a, a lawyer. In your safe deposit box. Yeah. While we're still kind of on entertainment news, Curb Your Enthusiasm, season 12. Just watched the last episode. It came out, I think, two Sundays ago, but I'm way behind. Mm-hmm. Wow. Uh, if you're a Seinfeld lover, if you're a Larry David fan or Curb Your Enthusiasm fan, just wow. End of an era. I was, yeah. I don't know anything about it. And, so. and kind of a bummer. Yeah. It's just, oh. So Larry David, I'll, I'll give you my Curb Your Enthusiasm spiel if you've never gotten into it. Larry David was the co-creator of Seinfeld. And what none of us knew in the nine years that Seinfeld was on the air was really that the character of George was based on Larry David. <laughs> so after he does right. Seinfeld, he's like, okay, if that show really was mostly about me, why don't I just do my own show? Right. Yeah. And so he did for 24. Five years, I think mm-hmm. the pilot episode of Curb Your Enthusiasm came out in 99. Wow. All of George's quirks mm-hmm. and the thing that really made him just this terrible, <laughs> but also terribly compelling character came from Larry David. Right. And when I watched the first show is about the pants tent. Yes. Now, dudes know about the pants tent. Do women know about the pants tent? Oh, yeah. I've got one going on right now. Yeah, I've definitely noticed it. I've just fluffed it up a little bit. Right. Well, and I mean, I used to go to church as a kid. Yeah. You know, suit pants do pants tents sometimes. They're just weird. When dudes sit down, there's a little bit of a tent here. And I can just imagine Larry David chewing on his pen in his office going, okay, well, how am I going to top Seinfeld? And looking down at his pants tent (laughs) going... I think this is something. Yeah, right. And so that's the first episode of Curb Your Enthusiasm is about having a pants tent Mm -hmm. and hilarity ensues. (laughs) It's 12 seasons of 10 episodes each featuring a master at the top of his game. And I'm sad it's over. Yeah. You know, the funny thing, though, is that he looked the exact same the entire time. (laughs) Kind of. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. In fact, he's. I think he's 76 right now, too. You know those people who, like... They look old when they're young, and then they don't change at all. Yeah. You know, like, let's see here. In the 90s, he would have been, what, in his, like, 40s, maybe? 50s? I mean, that was 25 years ago, so he would have been 50. Yeah. And, like, 20 years later is a lot. You'd think he'd look a lot different, but he doesn't. You know, I feel like most 50-year-olds still look pretty young. Yeah, I think think he looked pretty much the same from 20 to 30, and then from 30 to 50, and then from 50 to 70. Okay, I think that's kind of fair, yeah. Yeah, especially him, because at age 50, he was already bald and gray. (laughs) Right. So tell me about that t-shirt you've got on there, Mike. Okay, this week's is not available at tetontshirts.com. It's the Idaho Falls (laughs) logo, thank you, Uh, with the, you know, the new one with the waves. Yeah. 
Yeah, it's nice. And I got it at what used to be uh-huh. the Idaho Falls Visitors Center there mm-hmm. on River Parkway. It's right. It's basically in between Snow Eagle Brewery and Jalisco's. Does it still have Chinese uh, lettering on it? Uh, it did. It did. For some yeah. reason, I don't know why. Well, it's because we have a lot of Asian tourists. Okay. Yeah. All right. Saying this is where you go to get your yeah, collectible basically. stuff. <laughs> so the grand opening was last Friday, April 12th. And we were there. We visited. We took some photos and video. Check mm-hmm. it out. There's your t-shirts. Obligatory Darth Tater shirt. Always a good one. Old vintage postcard of Idaho Falls blown up big size like you can see the temple. Oh, that's cool. And the um, hospital, the old hospital. It's mm-hmm. not there anymore. All the Huckleberry stuff. Yes. All of the Huckleberry flavored stuff. If you wonder where to get that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Which I love Huckleberry Kevin, flavored stuff. Let me know if you want some of that. Yeah. Yeah. You want some Huckleberry honey or something? And look at these plushies. These are super cute. You know, I'm actually really glad that they revamped things so much. It looks so much better now. And I will say there was a time when I went in there to get you a gift. I think it was for like Valentine's Day or something. And all I wanted was a water tower t-shirt, which I felt should have been there. Like, there's no reason I could think of that that wouldn't be, you know, available in their shop. And it wasn't. And did you see, the, uh, earlier on in the video we played, there uh-huh. was, they do have one water tower shirt. Now, yes. I don't, I'm a little biased, but I don't think it's as good as the water tower shirt that I'll be wearing next episode uh-huh. that is currently on tetontshirts.com. Right. It's great. It's a pretty great t-shirt. Yeah. Have you seen the water tower lately? It's looking pretty pathetic. They haven't repainted it. I have noticed that. And so it's just looking old and dilapidated. You know, though, I don't mind that. I think it kind of gives it a little bit of like charm. It makes it feel more like a, you know, like a. uh, I think it looks dumpy. You think it looks dumpy? I think it reflects poorly on our town. (laughs) Oh, I I could see that. I can't wait for the new one. (gasps) Did you just? Mm. Yes, I did. Can't wait for the new one. It's going to be awesome. Okay, here's the thing. Fine, I get that we have to have a new one. But can we at least paint it the same? Yeah, I don't know. Would would that be I don't like know if... would we be would we be trying too hard to recapture the magic to the point where it wouldn't work? Yeah, with a different shape, I think it might look more pepperminty, which I'm not opposed to, by the way. Yeah, you do like a nice peppermint. But I think it's just going to be silver with this logo Aww. on it. You know? That's so boring. Yeah, yeah, change is good. I love change. Okay, change is good, but I hate that everything's so uniform and plain now. Like, okay, we were driving through a neighborhood the other day and every house was beige. You know, like, can we get a yellow or a blue house in there somewhere? I think they're nice. Tiki tacky houses and they all look the same? I mean, yeah. Yeah. Exactly. I just want something a little different. I like character. So this Saturday, a very exciting day. It is 420, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, is it? (laughs) The big 420. 420. Do you know why I'm excited for this day? (laughs) Well, I I can think of the reason why most people would be, but I hope that that's not why you're saying it, because I don't want you getting in trouble for admitting that. (laughs) Well, Carly, it kicks, I don't know what you were thinking, but it kicks off National Park Week. Oh, (laughs) you know what? Okay, but that actually is like ridiculously fitting. Yeah. Yeah, that's kind of nice, you know? It's a very nature-oriented day. Mm -hmm. One could say that people on either side of that aisle both dig plants. (laughs) And and Yellowstone's going to be free that day. Oh, that's cool. This Saturday. Man, just... Uh, In fact, all national parks are. That's Um, really cool. And also, folks, please don't drive high. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, no, no, I wouldn't even say, yeah, certainly don't um, 420 it up. Don't 420 blaze it and go try to pet a bison. Yeah, that Just would be stupid. A friendly reminder. Yeah. Can you imagine? It's not a zoo. That would be so terrifying. It's Okay, here's the thing. You're not supposed to pet any of the animals at the zoo unless it's a petting zoo. Okay? Right. Like It's not a petting zoo. If anything, y'all should be treating it like it's a zoo. You're not going to hop in with like Harambe and try to give him a cuddle. <laughs> Okay, that would be stupid. I can tell you what I'm doing right now for Harambe. No, not really. <laughs> but Dang yeah, I mean, if you, <laughs> if, you, if you ever see uh, a Tatanka up close and personal in real life, you realize that they, they put the tank in Tatanka. They uh-huh. are, these buffalo bison are huge. Yeah, they're big old boys. They will kill you. Well, and I get that they look like fluffy cows. They are not fluffy cows. <laughs> You know, no. yeah, 
Jeez Louise. You know, you can get bison meat at Winco. At Winco? Yeah, if you're looking for a low-fat alternative, beef alternative. Oh, wait. Yeah, I think I did see that. It's a little spendy, but yeah. it's it's tasty. You, you want to a- do a bison meat brunch this weekend? Yeah, or a bison meatloaf. Ooh, I do, ma- I do make Decent. a pretty mean meatloaf. You do. I love meatloaf. Oh, man, that last <laughs> one you made. <laughs> it was pretty damn good. Yeah. Yeah. So National Park Week kicks off Saturday, Lincoln Post, to get into the parks for free. Lincoln Park? <laughs> yeah, you can go to Lincoln Park too. That's funny. Nice. But in the end, it won't really matter. <laughs> so Yellowstone National Park, that is why you are IFAF this week. Crisp high five. Whoosh, 21 finger gun salute. Pew, pew. And chef's kiss. To you. Speaking of Yellowstone, you know Jellystone. Of course, yeah. In the Yogi Bear cartoon. Yeah. I saw this list of the longest running cartoons set in each state. Oh, really? Did you know that Idaho has a cartoon set in our state? Is it one I would know? It, it's one you should know. It's one I should know. Okay, what is it? Both being Idahoans, we should know. It's Napoleon Dynamite. Did you know there was an animated series? One season, six episodes, came out in 2012. What? Voiced by the people who were in the movie. What? John Heater and crew. Oh, yeah. shit, I did not know that. And now I'm pissed that we didn't know that before we went to the Napoleon Dynamite thing. I think it's free on Pluto TV. Wha- That's why we got we got to watch that. Okay, I'm down. And also, it's kind of sad that our longest running cartoon set in our state is one season yeah. and six episodes. I'm just surprised we have one. Like, Utah <laughs> yeah. has nothing. Um, um, suck at Utah. <laughs> Montana has nothing. Oh, wait, so is Yogi Bear in Wyoming? Okay. Uh-huh. Yeah, for Jellystone. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> it's all right. Which it's is weird, because isn't most of Yellowstone in Montana, I want to say, or no? Am I wrong? I'm not super sure, Do honestly. I not know my geography? We should be better than this. <laughs> okay. And by the way, ignore the Simpsons on that graphic. It, it claims to have taken place in Oregon. That's not true at all. No. Mad creator of the Simpsons it purposefully made it. Well, no, it's in it's in any state. It's in your your state. Oh. Finger quotes. Because there's a Springfield in almost every state. Okay. I think yeah, one of his quotes fair. was, yeah, like Springfield is in a state that borders like Montana Montana, Texas, and Illinois. You like it's Okay, yeah. It's that that's why I think that's one of the reasons the show mm-hmm. could be considered so popular is the longest running sitcom on television. Right. Is um, or American television anyway, Mm -hmm. is that it could take place anywhere. Right. Yeah. That said, Matt did grow up in the Portland area and based a lot of things on Portland, Eugene, and that area. Okay. Yeah. But it's supposed to be anywhere. Right. Right. Speaking of which, Family Guy, is it season 13, episode one? is a crossover with The Simpsons, and it's possibly the greatest episode of television ever made. You know, I don't know if I've seen that one yet. <laughs> it's great. That's fun. Okay, I'm. you know what? We can watch it tonight. Okay. One thing you won't see in the parks, though, but is big news, especially in the coming weeks, mm-hmm. are cicadas. We don't get them out here yeah, in the West. Yeah, thank goodness, because they freaked me out, man. Yeah. So there's 13-year cicadas, mm-hmm. and then there's 17-year cicadas. So if you do the math, they come along whatever 13 times 17 is, which I think is 221. Like the last time. So the big one is happening this year, like in the next (gasps) few weeks to come, mostly in Wisconsin, Mm -hmm. Illinois, kind of in the Midwest and in the South. Mm -hmm. And I'm not sure if there's any places because we don't really have very good records of this. So we're going to find out. I'm not sure if there's many places where they will both happen. Oh, really? Okay. But we're about to find out, and that's kind of exciting. Well, and didn't we also just have that weird grasshopper thing happen through here not too long well, ago? Well, I know Utah was overrun with them last year. Right, yeah. Where were the seagulls? The Yeah, <laughs> I guess I'm just saying, like, it's a little weird that so many bugs are happening lately. Like, like the last time this happened, Thomas Jefferson was still alive or something? Wild. If you think about it. Yeah. Okay, yeah, that's a good point. And the next time this happens is going to be 2240-something, you know? Good uh, luck to them. (laughs) Yeah. Apparently, some people eat cicadas. Well, I mean, 
at some point, if there are so many around, it's just bound to happen. <laughs> and they say you shouldn't eat cicadas if you have a shellfish allergy because the proteins, this is so gross to talk about, the proteins in the cicadas are similar to the exoskeletons of shellfish, something gross. Does that mean that they taste like shrimp? I don't know. I mean, okay. If cicadas tasted like shrimp, I would eat them. I, I'd eat them. I but, like shrimp. But I was. And technically, dude, shrimp is bugs. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, lobsters are the cockroaches of the sea. Yeah. I lived in Milwaukee 13 years ago mm-hmm. when the 13-year <laughs> cicadas came out uh-huh. and drove down to, if you if you don't know your geography, because I sure as hell didn't before moving there, Milwaukee's basically a northwest suburb of Chicago. Right. You can get from Milwaukee to O'Hare in like 59 minutes. Oh, okay. And in between, halfway in between is a little place called Lake Geneva. And I went to a park kind of in there, and it was amazing sonically. Oh, I bet. Do you, do you remember me talking about how I want to become a sonic tourist? Yes. Just to hear all the things? Yeah. Um, like that carousel with the mm-hmm. band organ at a park in Minneapolis? That sounds... I would go to Minneapolis for that. That sounds fun. But being surrounded by these things. And then I watched a documentary on it later. And you know who really benefits from this? Who? Are all the other... Um, one tier up predators of cicada. Oh. All the birds and squirrels are mm-hmm. fat as hell for the Aww, next year. That's kind of nice. Yeah. That's cute. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's sort of like they, they come up in one day and they do, will do whatever to their eggs, uh-huh. shed their skin, and it's just, it's Ugh, so gross. so gross. It really was. If you get the heebie jeebies, it was like being surrounded by a bunch of flying cockroaches. That's kind oh, of the, that's kind of how ow. big they are. Oh, I don't like that one bit. But Let's it was so it. crazy to be surrounded by. If Thanks, you're in the they hate it. <laughs> Midwest or South, <laughs> kill it with fire. Uh, it, it'd be a hell of an experience, I guess. I guess so. But I do like that at least the birds and the and the squirrels will a- appreciate it. Oh, um, yeah. <laughs> okay, but it would be kind of messed up if any of those birds or squirrels had a shellfish allergy. <laughs> right. <laughs> That'd be a bummer. Because, like, I can't really think of anything <laughs> else in nature that they're allergic to. Like, I can't think of... Are animals allergic to things? I mean, I know some are. Like, I know that there are dogs that are allergic to, like, if they are, grass and stuff. they're dead. Yeah, I guess that's true. Wow. <laughs> yeah. We'll never know. The Bummer. world will never know. <laughs> yeah. Hmm. Okay, but speaking of bugs and terrifying scenarios with them, have you ever heard of cranberry bog spiders? Yes, I've heard this. Yeah. So, I just found out about this in a Facebook short, and I'm terrified now. <laughs> So Ocean Spray or whoever the big cranberry producer <laughs> right. producers are, mm-hmm. the I guess the best way to harvest cranberries is to flood the fields. Right. And then the cranberries just nice sort of- little bog. Yeah, they rise to the top. Mm-hmm. You scoop them up. A bobbin bog. And they pay their cranberry collectors a lot of money, like $100,000 or I don't know, something. What I a, mean, for that much, maybe I could do- ooh, I don't know. <laughs> one of the reasons they pay them so much uh-huh. is- the other things that rise to the top of the water are wolf spiders or something, oh. but big old nasty spiders. Well, okay, and wolf spiders are, are crawling actually- all over you oh. while you collect the ocean spray cranberries. Okay, but you'd think that they'd have like spider proof clothing or something. Yeah. Like, like hazmat suits. Yeah. Like, like beekeeper I uniform. I was going to say like a beekeeper uniform. Yeah. You know, like if I had that, I could do it. If I, oh, I'm getting the heebie-jeebies just thinking about it. I don't like this. Where's a feather when I need one? <laughs> right. But anyway, um, like I don't get why they don't just create that kind of suit for them. You know, just make those like weird rubber coveralls go up over their heads, but yeah. leave a nice little vent. You know. Yeah. Oh, spooky though. I could do it. <laughs> well, and and wolf spiders are harmless technically, right? I, I think the spiders that end up crawling on you are harmless. Oh, but then I couldn't. Okay, no, I couldn't do but it. But they're still crawling all over you. This that's Stop. like some fear factor shit. Yeah, man. <laughs> that's like some Joe Rogan. God. Yeah, okay, you know those people who like have pet spiders? Uh huh. They're like all over TikTok now, especially the like little jumping spiders. <laughs> I now think those are kind of cute, but I don't like how fast they are, and that I freaks don't. me out. Yeah. But their faces aren't terrible. Yeah, <laughs> right, right. But anyway, like, I feel like I know there are people who dig spiders and like can let them crawl on them if it's like a controlled spider, you know, like a singular or like a couple of. So I guess you could train yourself to be cool with it. But man, I just, I feel like you have to have something different about you 
genetically. So Local News 8 did this interesting story last week about how Idaho crimes are becoming more common in national headlines. Interesting. So they brought back Jay Hildebrandt. Well, to be fair, I think a big part of it is that we've had such weird crimes lately. Yeah, some weird ones. Yeah. They analyzed the 129 national headlines Mm -hmm. about Idaho Falls from, or sorry, about Idaho from the last six months. 104 of them involved crimes. 25 did not. Wow. Wow. But yeah, if you think about it, well, okay. Just last week, the Econo Mm -hmm. Lodge standoff. Yeah. How random is that? That was a weird one. Yeah. And I, like, they called the cops at 115. Cops didn't show up until 3. An hour, 45 minutes later, they the IFPD said it's because they had other stuff going on. But then later it was revealed that they knew the dude. They uh-huh. had had encounters with him before. Uh-huh. They specifically brought a <clears throat> ballistic shield to the confrontation with the guy holed up in the Econo Lodge. Also, I hope that they evacuated the other rooms. I would imagine there's a whole procedure. Right. They probably... I, I don't know why they said, well, we had other stuff going on. They probably had to scramble the jets. I mean, yeah. It seems silly that they'd say that. Evacuate everybody else. Because here's the thing. Get their SWAT teams together. <laughs> right. Yeah. And and re- realistically, too, if I heard that and during that time I got a speeding ticket, I'd have been like, no, there wasn't. You pulled me over. <laughs> right. That guy could have been over there taking care of this, but he was giving me a ticket. <laughs> yeah. The Econo Lodge standoff. Let's see. Chad Daybell. Mm-hmm. His trial began. The 85-year-old woman in Bingham County who, so an intruder broke into right. her home. I heard about that. And uh, handcuffed her mm-hmm. and started wandering around the house. She went back to her room, got the gun from under her pillow, shot the guy dead. Damn. How was she able to do that with the handcuffs? I, Did she get out of them? I don't know. Did One she take the chair with her? <laughs> 85-year-old granny, that's how. <laughs> that's pretty cool, honestly. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. I just I think she deserves a crisp high five. I think so, Or yeah. five. Wow. Um, d- 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 Daniel Rodimer accused of killing Christopher <laughs> Tapp, national mm-hmm, news. Mm-hmm. Um, Dylan Rounds remains found. Rest yeah. in peace, I was Dylan. really sad to hear about that. I was following that case. Koberger. I mean, we just... There's so mm-hmm. much national murder, death, kill, true crime story mm-hmm. news. Right, right. Coming out of well, Idaho. What's going on? Not only on? that, but there's like the Jeremy Best case too. Mm-hmm. I don't know if that was covered nationally, yep. but that was a weird one. And it was so... There are so many questions that have yet to be answered, you know? And honestly, I'm kind of shocked that Chad Daybill is even choosing to go to trial after everything. Like, bro, you saw what happened. Yeah. <laughs> like, he- You'd think that at that point, you'd be like, I'm just going to plead guilty. You think he's got that God (laughs) complex? Oh, of course he does. Yeah. But I mean, I don't know. At that point, I'd be like, oh, maybe I'm wrong. (laughs) I just, where are the crazies coming from? Have they always been here? I mean, I could say that I could see some cultural elements about this state in particular that could stoke those flames if it already exists in someone. Yeah. You know? And yeah, it's it's freaky, man. Well, let's try to dial it down, Idaho. <laughs> yeah. And also, don't be dumb. If you're like under 25 and you think that getting in a fight with a gun is cool and like something you should do, oh, you're just stupid and ruining your life. You will get caught and then you're going to be in jail for the rest of your life and you're going to look real dumb. So. Well done. You just solved it, Carly. Thank you. You it's- just <laughs> solved crime in Idaho. Yes. Yes, I did. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, 25-year-olds, <laughs> don't be dumb. Yeah. Uh, okay, dumb policemen, dummies. you all get the day off now. You <laughs> yeah. can go home. <laughs> well, and there is like this weird subculture with some of the younger dudes around here that I've noticed where like being trashy is cool and that's like their preferred aesthetic. And that's always been, yeah, it's always been that way. <laughs> kind of. That I've seen. To an extent. But like, I mean, there were times when young men would wear sweaters. <laughs> you know, <laughs> and these guys don't do that. You know, like everyone's gotten so cash. Yeah. There are people who are just so cool with being trashy. And it's like, come on, man. Wouldn't it be way cooler to have like a ton of money and like be like able to do whatever you want and yeah, like drive I, nice cars? I think you're talking about angry young men who wear their defiance like a badge of honor. Uh, it's, I mean, there are. It's more ignorance, I think, than defiance. Yes, that's, I mean, that's part of it. I, but right. I, I definitely see a lot of young males who are anti-establishment at age 20 mm-hmm. and their establishment by age 30. 
Right. There's a Rick and Morty episode where uh, they take a 40 year old Rick and they got to cut him back down to the age right. he is, which is like, I think mid teens. Mm-hmm. And so like a 15 year old and a 28 year old, the 28 year old comes out of the machine and he says, I'm just about ready to sell out. <laughs> That's the thing though. So many of them are men that aren't selling out. Like they're 38 and still think it's cool to wear monster hoodies. Like, dude, okay. If you own any clothing with a monster logo on it, <laughs> throw it away. <laughs> All you're doing is branding yourself as a doofus. And hearty t-shirts. It doesn't look good on anyone. You don't look cool. Yeah. I don't care how much you like that energy drink. Even as somebody in the demo, I will probably never buy a Tommy Bahama shirt. Oh, but you look so cute. (laughs) Oh, no. No, because that just sort of says instant douchebag. I get it. You know, I might as well. But at least it says instant douchebag. Have a neck tattoo and a scarf and some earrings, you know. Right, right. I might as well have those, those, how do bearded, long-haired hipster dudes wear wool caps when it's 90 degrees in the summer? How? I don't know. How? Maybe they just get so used to it. You know, their their beard keeps them so warm anyway. I know we're on two it's different just an extra topics here. Yeah, blanket, whatever. You know? okay. Either way, like just I this, see your point. Yeah. Like no energy drink is that good. Okay. <laughs> I have never seen someone wearing oh. monster clothing and thought, wow, they look really cool. Do you remember the no fear <laughs> stickers on the back of trucks? Haven't seen one of those in a minute. <laughs> yes, I have. Thank goodness. Yeah. Or the Calvin from Calvin and <sighs> yes, Hobbes pissing, pissing on whatever on logo. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> just stupid. Like it's all just like or like the the new one is the the it with the guy humping it. Uh, okay, yeah. Yeah, have you seen that? Yeah, as if to say <laughs> it. Right. And it's all just like in no world is someone going to see you with this on your truck or on your clothing and yeah. think you look really badass, man. And, and say, "Ooh, we got a badass over here." Well, I mean, they'll say that because <laughs> yeah. you won't look like a badass. They'll say that sarcastically. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But I but that's but that's the mindset of these young men mm-hmm. who I weep for. Yeah. Is they're like, yeah, you know, big old middle finger to society. <laughs> and we're society. You understand yeah, that, right? Yeah. We're like on the other side. So I was talking to John Radford from ECAP mm-hmm. uh, at the Chamber of Commerce swing and soiree, speakeasy soiree that we yes, went to. Yes, that was fun. And he's like, hey, man, you know, thought about joining the chamber and stuff and doing some stuff. And uh-huh. I'm like, well, John, maybe, but I'd have to reconcile the fact that we are, we sort of pride ourselves as being smart asses on the sidelines. Right, right. You know, we're not the news. Mm-hmm. We're not the TV or the radio. We have certain freedoms mm-hmm. that they don't have. Yeah. And I think can talk more real than, you know, the the establishment can. I would agree with that. So moving on, it was my understanding that for the past several years, INL Mm -hmm. was sort of in a cleanup mode where they were kind of, you know, I don't know, shutting down reactors, getting rid of nuclear waste. Well, come to find out, they're building another nuclear reactor. Oh. Coming in 2026, the Marvel Micro Reactor Project. I mean, they should have just named it the Ant-Man. Yeah. Yeah. Because, you know, Marvel, Micro. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> maybe that maybe that will maybe we can start a petition it'll be their little nickety name yeah <laughs> yeah yeah ebr1 doesn't didn't that have a nickname anyway we're building a new reactor that will showcase inl's pivotal role in advancing nuclear technology and stuff i mean those are lots of buzzwords that don't mean a lot but i'm excited about it <laughs> well and that's why that's why idaho falls could be springfield right you know yeah like, I mean, we definitely we, have a lot of the same vibe going on. Uh huh. All we need is a big old tire fire. Or did they mm-hmm. put that out on The Simpsons? I think maybe they finally took oh, care did of they that. Finally, that's good. I could be wrong. <laughs> we don't have a Mr. Burns, but we have like an anti Mr. Burns that gives away a bunch of money to charitable causes around Christmas and stuff. You know, so oh, that's cool. yeah. yeah, yeah, that's always nice. Puts on the fireworks and yeah, that's always good. But and and, and like every town has a Shelbyville. Oh. Okay, like in Idaho Falls, we sometimes make fun of, oh, I don't know. Let's just pull one out of the hat. Rigby? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, you, you Rigby. <laughs> um, yeah. <laughs> in Salt Lake, we made fun of Ogden or Provo. Right. In Milwaukee, they made fun of Green Bay. Mm-hmm. You know, like it's just every town does it. Yeah. 
Yeah, there's always that smaller, slightly lesser town right next to there that the people in the big town are like, why would you even live there? I'm sure Boise makes fun of Idaho Falls. Oh, yeah, probably. Right? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, honestly, we're probably so far off their radar that they don't even think to make yeah. fun of us. <laughs> they don't think about us at all. Yeah. <laughs> We don't have a Jebediah Springfield, but we do have that dude down by the river on Memorial that right. we walk by during the farmer's market. Yeah. It's not Jim Bridger. I don't think it's just evocative of any trapper. Right. But uh, And we don't have a Lard Lad Donuts, but we do have Chip. We stopped by Chip this yes. week. Yes. Oh, Chip was good. If you're looking for a quick dinner and dessert, Marco's yeah. Pizza Mm-hmm. Pretty good value. Oh, and they have the pizza bowls. Which is so cool. If it's you're doing keto, low carb. Yeah. Yeah. It's all the pizza, none of the carb. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's really good. I got the Philly cheesesteak one. It was amazing. It was so delicious. It's, yeah, it's. I'm a real big fan of meat and cheese in a bowl. Yeah. Yeah. Because it rocks. It does rock. <laughs> and then we went across, I mean, right next door to Chip. Mm-hmm. Got a nice cookie. Check this store out. We took some oh. photos. I got their churro cook, their churro, I had a churro on now one of my cats, yeah. one of their, um, oh, it wasn't even a churro cookie. It was, was their it tres, tres leches? leches cookie. Although realistically, it was kind of more of a churro cookie, okay. was saying, but it was delicious and I loved it. <laughs> I got the uh, Speculose Biscoff cookie. Uh-huh. And you also got a mini of the chocolate chip. Yeah. You can get minis too. Which is so smart. Yeah. Yeah. I like the place. And speaking of donuts, we do also have duck donuts right by there, too. And those little things are delicious. I just wish we had more, like, cool signage. Like, right. do you remember the JB's Big Boy at JB's yeah. Restaurant on Broadway and I-15, like, holding up the yeah, burger? Yeah, that was cool, dude. Yeah, which I think the Lard Lad sign is Dukes. supposed yeah. to be evocative of. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, we need more cool signs. Yeah, which we do still have a Burger Boy over at the Motor, the motor View. That's right. Yeah. He's in front of the concession stand. Yeah, which is super cool. As we found out last year when we saw Barbie. <laughs> I love Barbie so much. Yeah. It's so freaking cute and cool. <laughs> I just love how hyper feminine it is. I was at Villa Coffee House this week with a buddy, Ben, mm-hmm. our, our drone guy. <laughs> Aw. Who, who is now droneless. Aw. Yeah. <laughs> Rip little Arthur. Yeah, we got to fix that. And I saw these really cool, I don't know what to call them other than collages. Oh, uh uh-huh. It was a collage of Idaho Falls. We'll show you two of them here in just a minute. Oh, okay. Yeah, I've seen those. Because he did one in 2017, Mm -hmm. one in 2020, and one in 2023. Right. So it appears as if he's on a three-year schedule with these things. Oh, I dig it. But we'll show you the 2020 one, and we'll show you the 2023 one. Mm -hmm. Anyway, Kevin is a local photographer who does these street-level signs, Mm -hmm. collages, and so you'll see it's an impossible picture, right? It's like right. it's got all the businesses all within a sixteen by nine yeah. frame. Yeah. But it's it's really cool to look at because like with anything like that, you sort of ooh, you pick out different businesses uh-huh. and you can tell, oh, okay, that's that's a picture of one thing superimposed on another one. It's it's a yeah. He does a really great photo. Like I think at one job. point he has like the pie hole neon sign in like the bagel city window or something like that. And the water or tower right people. above it. Yeah. Jeez look at me. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder how long it'll be until Lily's is on there. Oh yeah. Yeah. Yeah your buddy's uh, consignment uh-huh. boutique. Yes. Uh-huh. Yeah and she's about to redo the outside and like get a new sign and stuff. So Honestly, by the time she's done with it, it's going to be so pretty. Do they have prom dresses at Lily's? They do, as a matter of fact. Yeah, she has some really amazing ones. She has a couple of Sherry Hills there. Now, I'm sure that that name means nothing to you. I don't know what that is. Okay, what they are are very nice, very expensive prom dresses that, unless you're buying it secondhand, they're impossible. Okay. to They're like... Six, seven, eight, nine hundred dollar prom dresses, which is nuts, <laughs> but they're gorgeous and impec- impeccably designed. So I'm just saying, like, go check them out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> anyway, we're going to leave you with a couple of the views here. We'll start with 2020. We'll pan it back and forth for you and then give you 2023 so you can see it too. And fast forward and rewind and back it up and find Waldo. <laughs> That's our show. Have a great week. We'll see you next week. KevinOdetPhotography.com or find him on Instagram. <laughs>